Ah, Turkish food. For me, and for those who may know me, you'll know how much I enjoy Turkish food. And this is a classic example. No matter where I go in Turkey, I always find I'm never disappointed with the food, really. And that has actually changed my understanding of eating in a big way. My whole diet system is now changed because of this. However, as a bit of fun, I wanted just to compare some of the food that I was brought up with, especially in Ireland and to some degree in England as well. And I think you may find it at least interesting, if not perhaps even funny, or perhaps even, ugh, I don't know. For instance, first of all, if you were in Ireland today, even, at a hotel, most hotels in Ireland during breakfast will serve black pudding. Black pudding will come along with your eggs, your bread, your sausage, which is a traditional British stroke Irish breakfast. And if you're not sure about black pudding, I have to tell you that black pudding is made from blood. Now, that may raise a few eyebrows. You have blood, which is traditionally coming from a pig. Now, I'm not much into pork, I never have been, but I grew up with black pudding. For me, it was one of the most tastiest, one of the most beautiful aspects of an Irish breakfast. And I suggest you try it, take the opportunity. I think you'll enjoy it very much. I'd like to mention also, because we're an island, of course, the sea comes into a lot of our cuisine. And one thing that we have is what we call a little small shellfish, which we call a winkle. Funny name, Winkle. It's a small little shell that comes onto the uh, rocks. They are quite prolific around Ireland in the northern part of the UK as well. The shellfish are boiled, and once they're boiled, they're edible. And they're edible because when you take the little shellfish and you open it up with a little pin or a little needle, turn it around, and out comes your goody snack. And that's Winkle. Another thing you can buy by the beach is a seaweed that we eat called dulse. Dulse is a red seaweed and it grows again on the rocks just off the coast. Harvesters will go out and they'll cut the seaweed from the rocks. It's usually a reddish color. They bring it back, wash it, and then uh, quite a bit of salt still remains because of the naturalness of the, of the product. But once it's dried, they simply bag, bag it in little white bags and on a Sunday or a Saturday by the beach, the children will go along with their parents and they'll buy a bag of seaweed, Dulles. Crazy, it still happens today. One thing I will mention that I know Turkish people like, and we also like in Ireland, we call it tripe. This is like white, and it's like gradiented and little holes in it. I hate it. I can't even look at it properly. And yet so many people, as in Ireland, as in Turkey, I love this. I hear in Turkey a lot of people like this when they get drunk. When they come back, they have this for a sort of a soup. Not for me, no thank you. Moving across to the mainland of the UK, we all know about fish and chips, but here's the thing about fish and chips. It's one of the most appetizing foods now in the UK. Everybody thinks it's like pretty whatever, it's not. They serve it with mushy peas, we call them, which are green peas, which are squashed, and we serve them with uh, tatar sauce. I know some people in Turkey, especially in Bodrum, who wanted to open a cafe selling just fish and chips. That was the acceptance of many people that eat and enjoy fish and chips, wherever you are in the UK. We can move on to jelly deals. Well, East End of London, this is where this product comes from. This again is a fish, an eel, which looks like a snake, and when caught, it's boiled, ready for eating, and then they simply chop it up into small chunks. Then they leave it in its bowl overnight. Once you leave them in a cold condition, they start to jellify. That's called jelly deals. And in the east end of London, and particularly in the little parts of South London, again, they're prolific. Many restaurants do this. I've tried it, I couldn't finish it. When I go to Emanunu, I used to go down onto the front and I used to buy bread and fish. I used to love that. But what I realized I loved most was the smell. That's what was getting me. When I actually got to eat it and taste it, it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. And, and that's another good thing about Turkish cuisine is that when you go into the restaurants, everything is on very open display. So when you go in, you can see all the meze sitting there beautifully in the case. On some restaurants when we go to, they bring the actual tray to the table, especially in the fish restaurants. And this is a great thing as well, I think. I never liked liver when I was in the UK, but when I came to Turkey, liver 
the way you guys do your liver, especially in near Tur near near Greece. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a place called yeah uh, that place. I was so impressed with that liver. They do it in a certain coating, in a certain way. I had two plates, chop toy dump. Then I bought more and I asked them to wrap it up in silver paper and put it in a box, wrap it up in a blanket and I put it in the trunk of my car for my friends because I'm so impressed with it. It was so nice. With the Mezzes, for instance, I, I don't have any problems with the Mezzes as well because I find that the majority of Mezzes I really enjoy. Ask me their name, no idea. I just look at them, I know what they are and I know I like that one, I know I like that one. Cocklerotchikok thing thing, you know, whatever that stomach thing is that you all have in Turkey, eh? Cockerich. I find that okay, but I won't eat it anymore now. When I did eat it, I found it very tasty, uh, but it's not on my list of first things to want to buy in Turkey, eh? But everybody has their own taste. And um, I'm generally so happy to be able to uh, have a Turkish cuisine at my table. So you guys are very lucky. Enjoy.